the Papal Basilica of St. Peter in the Vatican, or simply Street. Peter's Basilica is an Italian Renaissance church in Vatican City, the papal enclave within the city of Rome. Designed principally by Donato Bramanti, Michelangelo, Carlo Modeno and Gian Lorenzo Bernini, St. Peter's is the most renowned work of Renaissance architecture and one of the largest churches in the world. While it is neither the mother church of the Catholic Church nor the Cathedral of the Diocese of Rome, St. Peter's is regarded as one of the holiest Catholic shrines. It has been described as holding a unique position in the Christian world and as the greatest of all churches of Christendom. Catholic tradition holds that the basilica is the burial site of Saint Peter, one of Christ's apostles and also the first pope, supposedly. Saint Peter's tomb is directly below the high altar of the basilica. For this reason, many popes have been interred at Saint Peter's since the early Christian period. There has been a church on this site since the time of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. Construction of the present basilica, replacing the old street. Peter's Basilica of the 4th century AD, began on the 18th of April 1506 and was completed on the 18th of November 1626. Saint Peter's is famous as a place of pilgrimage and for its liturgical functions. The Pope presides at a number of liturgies throughout the year, drawing audiences of 15,000 to over 80,000 people, either within the Basilica or the adjoining street. Peter's Square Saint Peter's has many historical associations with the early Christian Church, the Papacy. The Protestant Reformation and Catholic Counter-Reformation and numerous artists, especially Michelangelo, as a work of architecture, it is regarded as the greatest building of its age. Saint Peter's is one of the four churches of Rome that hold the rank of major basilica. Contrary to popular misconception, it is not a cathedral because it is not the seat of a bishop. The Cathedral of the Pope as Bishop of Rome is in the Archbasilica of Saint. John Lateran. Overview. Saint. Its central dome dominates the skyline of Rome. The basilica is approached via Street. Peter's Square, a forecourt in two sections, both surrounded by tall colonnades. The first space is oval and the second trapezoid. The facade of the basilica, with a giant order of columns, stretches across the end of the square and is approached by steps on which stand two 5.55 meter statues of the first century apostles to Rome, Saints Peter and Paul. The basilica is cruciform in shape, with an elongated nave in the Latin cross form but the early designs were for a centrally planned structure and this is still in evidence in the architecture. The central space is dominated both externally and internally by one of the largest domes in the world. The entrance is through an arthrex, or entrance hall, which stretches across the building. One of the decorated bronze doors leading from the narthex is the holy door, only open during jubilees. The interior is of vast dimensions when compared with other churches. One author wrote, only gradually does it dawn upon us, as we watch people draw near to this or that monument, strangely they appear to shrink, they are, of course, dwarfed by the scale of everything in the building. This in its turn overwhelms us. The nave which leads to the central dome is in three bays, with piers supporting a barrel vault, the highest of any church. The nave is framed by wide aisles which have a number of chapels off them. There are also chapels surrounding the dome, moving around the basilica in a clockwise direction there. The baptistry, the chapel of the presentation of the Virgin, the larger choir chapel, the Clementine chapel with the altar of St. Gregory, the sacristy entrance, the left transept with altars to the crucifixion of St. Peter, St. Joseph and St. Thomas, the altar of the Sacred Heart, the chapel of the Madonna of Colonna, the altar of St. Peter and the paralytic, the apse with the chair of St. Peter, the altar of St. Peter raising Tabitha, the altar of the Archangel Michael, the altar of the Navicella, 
the right transept with altars of St. Erasmus, St. Precessa and Martiniano, and St. Wenceslas, the altar of St. Basil, the Gregorian chapel with the altar of the Madonna of Succor, the larger chapel of the Holy Sacrament the Chapel of St. Sebastian and the Chapel of the Pietà. At the heart of the Basilica, beneath the high altar, is the Confessio or Chapel of the Confession, in reference to the Confession of Faith by St. Peter, which led to his martyrdom. Two curving marble staircases lead to this underground chapel at the level of the Constantinian Church and immediately above the purported burial place of St. Peter. The entire interior of St. Peter's is lavishly decorated with marble, reliefs, architectural sculpture and gilding. The basilica contains a large number of tombs of popes and other notable people, many of which are considered outstanding artworks. There are also a number of sculptures in niches and chapels, including Michelangelo's Pietà. The central feature is a bell dashen, or canopy over the papal altar, designed by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. The sanctuary culminates in a sculptural ensemble, also by Bernini, and containing the symbolic chair of St. Peter. One observer wrote, St. Peter's Basilica is the reason why Rome is still the center of the civilized world. For religious, historical, and architectural reasons it by itself justifies a journey to Rome, and its interior offers a palimpsest of artistic styles at their best. The American philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson described Street Peters as an ornament of the earth, the sublime of the beautiful, status, saint. Peter's Basilica is one of the papal basilicas and one of the four major basilicas of Rome, the other major basilicas being the basilicas of St. John Lateran, St. Mary Major, and St. Paul outside the walls. However, unlike all the other papal major basilicas, it is wholly within the territory, and thus the sovereign jurisdiction, of the Vatican City State, and not that of Italy. It is the most prominent building in the Vatican City. Its dome is a dominant feature of the skyline of Rome. Probably the largest church in Christendom, it covers an area of 2.3 hectares. One of the holiest sites of Christianity and Catholic tradition, it is traditionally the burial site of its titular saint. Peter, who was the head of the Twelve Apostles of Jesus and, according to tradition, the first bishop of Antioch and later the first bishop of Rome, rendering him the first pope. Although the New Testament does not mention Street, Peter's martyrdom in Rome, tradition, based on the writings of the Fathers of the Church, holds that his tomb is below the Baldash and an altar of the Basilica in the Confession. For this reason, many popes have, from the early years of the church, been buried near Pope Street, Peter in the necropolis beneath the basilica. Construction of the current basilica over the old Constantinian basilica began on 18 April 1506. At length, on 18 November 1626 Pope Urban VIII solemnly dedicated the basilica. Saint Peter's Basilica is neither the Pope's official seat nor first in rank among the major basilicas of Rome. This honor is held by the Pope's Cathedral, the Archbasilica of St. John Lateran which is the mother church of all churches in communion with the Catholic Church. However, St. Peter's is certainly the Pope's principal church in terms of use because most papal liturgies and ceremonies take place there due to its size proximity to the papal residence, and location within the Vatican City proper. The Chair of St. Peter, or Cathedra, an ancient chair sometimes presumed to have been used by St. Peter himself, but which was a gift from Charles the Bald and used by many popes, symbolizes the continuing line of apostolic succession from St. Peter to the reigning pope. It occupies an elevated position in the apse of the basilica supported symbolically by the doctors of the church and enlightened symbolically by the Holy Spirit. History
St. Peter's burial site after the crucifixion of Jesus on Friday, April 7, 30 AD. It is recorded in the biblical book of the Acts of the Apostles that one of his twelve disciples, Simon known as St. Peter, a fisherman from Galilee, took a leadership position among Jesus' followers and was of great importance in the founding of the Christian Church. The name Peter is Petrus in Latin and Petros in Greek, deriving from Petra, which means stone or rock in Greek, and is the literal translation of the Aramaic Kepa, the name given to Simon by Jesus. It is believed by a long tradition that Peter, after a ministry of 34 years, traveled to Rome and met his martyrdom there along with Paul on October 13, 64 AD during the reign of the Roman Emperor Nero. His execution was one of the many martyrdoms of Christians following the Great Fire of Rome. According to Oregon, Peter was crucified head downwards by his own request because he considered himself unworthy to die in the same manner as Jesus. The crucifixion took place near an ancient Egyptian obelisk in the Circus of Nero. The obelisk now stands in St. Peter's Square and is revered as a witness to Peter's death. It is one of several ancient obelisks of Rome. According to tradition, Peter's remains were buried just outside the circus, on the Mons Vaticanus across the Via Cornelia from the circus, less than 150 meters from his place of death. The Via Cornelia was a road which ran east to west along the north wall of the circus on land now covered by the southern portions of the Basilica, and St. Peter's Square. Peter's grave was initially marked simply by a red rock, symbolic of his name. A shrine was built on this site some years later. Almost 300 years later, Old Street, Peter's Basilica was constructed over this site. The area now covered by the Vatican City had been a cemetery for some years before the Circus of Nero was built. It was a burial ground for the numerous executions in the circus and contained many Christian burials. Because for many years after the burial of St. Peter many Christians chose to be buried near Peter. In 1939, in the reign of Pope Pius XII, ten years of archaeological research began under the crypt of the Basilica, an area inaccessible since the 9th century. The excavations revealed the remains of shrines of different periods at different levels, from Clement VIII to Calixtus II and Gregory I, built over an edicula containing fragments of bones that were folded in a tissue with gold decorations, tinted with the precious murex purple. Although it could not be determined with certainty that the bones were those of Peter, the rare vestments suggested a burial of great importance. On 23 December 1950, in his pre-Christmas radio broadcast to the world, Pope Pius XII announced the discovery of St. Peter's tomb, Old Street, Peter's Basilica Old Street. Peter's Basilica was the 4th century church begun by the Emperor Constantine the Great between 319 and 333 AD. It was of typical basilical form, a wide nave and two aisles on each side and an apsidal end, with the addition of a transept or bema, giving the building the shape of a tau cross. It was over 103.6 meters long, and the entrance was preceded by a large colonnaded atrium. This church had been built over the small shrine believed to mark the burial place of St. Peter. It contained a very large number of burials and memorials, including those of most of the popes from St. Peter to the 15th century. Like all of the earliest churches in Rome, both this church and its successor had the entrance to the east and the apse at the west end of the building. Since the construction of the current basilica, the name Old Street, Peter's Basilica has been used for its predecessor to distinguish the two buildings. The plan to rebuild by the end of the 15th century, having been neglected during the period of the Avignon Papacy, the old basilica was in bad repair. It appears that the first pope to consider rebuilding, or at least making radical changes was Pope Nicholas V. 
He commissioned work on the old building from Leone Battista Alberti and Bernardo Rosalino and also had Rosalino design a plan for an entirely new basilica, or an extreme modification of the old. His reign was frustrated by political problems and when he died, little had been achieved. He had, however, ordered the demolition of the Colosseum and by the time of his death, 2,522 cartloads of stone had been transported for use in the new building. The foundations were completed for a new transept and choir to form a domed Latin cross with the preserved nave and side aisles of the old basilica. Some walls for the choir had also been built. Pope Julius II planned far more for St. Peter's than Nicholas V's program of repair or modification. Julius was at that time planning his own tomb, which was to be designed and adorned with sculpture by Michelangelo and placed within St. Peter's. In 1505 Julius made a decision to demolish the ancient basilica and replace it with a monumental structure to house his enormous tomb in a grand eyes, himself in the popular imagination. A competition was held, and a number of the designs have survived at the Uffizi Gallery. A succession of popes and architects followed in the next 120 years, the combined efforts resulting in the present building. The scheme begun by Julius II continued through the reigns of Leo X, Hadrian V, Clement VII, Paul III, Julius III, Marcellus II, Paul IV, Pius IV, Pius V, Gregory XIII, Sixtus V, Urban VII, Gregory XIV, Innocent IX. Clement VIII, Leo XI, Paul V, Gregory XV, Urban VIII and Innocent X. Financing with indulgences One method employed to finance the building of St. Peter's Basilica was the granting of indulgences in return for contributions. A major promoter of this method of fundraising was Albrecht, Archbishop of Mainz and Magdeburg who had to clear debts owed to the Roman Curia by contributing to the rebuilding program. To facilitate this, he appointed the German-Dominican preacher Johann Tetzel, whose salesmanship provoked a scandal. A German Augustinian priest, Martin Luther, wrote to Archbishop Albrecht arguing against this selling of indulgences. He also included his disputation of Martin Luther on the power and efficacy of indulgences, which came to be known as the 95 Theses. This became a factor in starting the Reformation, the birth of Protestantism.